Boasting one of the planet's most diverse landscapes, Chile has in recent years become an increasingly popular travel destination, particularly among nature lovers and adventure seekers. Chile is also blessed with an abundance of superb national parks and conservation areas, many of them popular destinations for those into trekking and hiking, as well as those who enjoy adventurous things to do such as climbing, river rafting, mountain biking and horseback riding. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 rated tourist attractions in Chile. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more awesome travel guides and make sure you hit the notification bell so that you know when we publish a new video. So now let's cut to the chase. At 10. Los Pinguinos Natural Monument In addition to its national parks, more of Chile's important conservation efforts can be seen in its many natural monuments. One of the most popular is Los Pinguinos Natural Monument. Just 35 kilometers northeast of the city of Punta Arenas at the southern tip of the island and incorporating the beautiful Magdalena and Marta Islands. As its name suggests, Pinguinos is Spanish for penguins. The monument is home to one of Chile's largest penguin colonies, consisting of some 60,000 breeding pairs of megalanic penguins. Accessible only by guided boat tours, the islands are also home to large colonies of seals and sea lions. Another of Chile's important natural monuments is El Morado, an easy drive from Santiago and site of the San Francisco Glacier and the 4,674-metre-tall Cerro El Morado mountain. Next up, at 9, Pumalin Park. Although only established as a nature sanctuary in 2005, Pumalin Park has become one of Chile's most important and popular conservation areas. Covering a vast area of more than 988,000 acres, stretching from the Andes to the Pacific, the area boasts some of the country's most pristine coastline and forests and is notable for being almost entirely untouched by human development. In addition to protecting the area's rich flora and fauna, including the Alerce, the world's oldest tree species, the park is easily accessible to visitors and provides one of the country's best wilderness experiences. It's owned and operated by the US-based Conservation Land Trust. Thanks to its extensive network of trails, campgrounds and visitor facilities, Pumalin Park is a delight to explore, whether for a short nature hike or as part of a longer ecotourism adventure. These often include a stay at rustic cabin-style accommodations overlooking one of the world's most beautiful unspoiled backdrops. Next up at 8, Lauca National Park. Located in the far north of Chile, just 140 kilometers east of the city of Arica, Lauca National Park covers an area of 1,300 square kilometers and consists largely of high plains and mountain ranges, many of the latter comprised of large volcanoes. Highlights include hiking around its many pristine mountain lakes, most notably Cotacatani and Chungara, which reflect the scenery around them to stunning effect. The park also features a number of important archaeological sites as well as evidence of the early European settlers who left their mark in the region's many fine old colonial churches and buildings. It's also especially popular for bird watchers and is home to more than 140 species including Andean geese, crested ducks, Chilean flamingos and the massive Andean condor. Another beautiful area popular with nature lovers is Congilio National Park also in the Araucania region of the Andes. And now at 7, Valparaiso. Chile's third largest city, Valparaiso, is nestled between the sea and the coastal mountain range about 112 kilometers northwest of Santiago and makes for an excellent day trip. As popular for its many old cobbled streets and unique architecture as it is for its lovely harbor and beaches, the city offers a great deal of fun things to do. Many tourist attractions focus on the country's rich maritime heritage, including Lord Cochrane's Museum, located in a lovely old colonial home built in 1842. Another must-visit tourist attraction is the superb Naval and Maritime Museum, with its displays dealing with the War of the Pacific of 1879 between Chile and allied Peru and Bolivia, with particular emphasis on the contributions of Chile's war heroes. A related attraction is the ironclad Huascar, located in the port of Tolcahuano, some 600 kilometers south of Santiago. 
Talcahuano's beautiful harbour, home to Chile's navy, is the base for this immaculate restored historic vessel built in 1865 in Britain and one of the only surviving such battleships of her kind. And now at six, it's Cape Horn. Considered something of a holy grail for travellers and the equivalent of Mount Everest for yachting types, Cape Horn is, if you can get here, well worth the effort, if not the bragging rights. The last stop before Antarctica and the world's southernmost tip, Cape Horn has for centuries been known as a sailor's graveyard for its remoteness, its hazardous coastline and the rough seas that prevail here. While less important as a trade route now thanks to the Panama Canal, it has seen an increase in popularity among serious sailing enthusiasts and features in a number of exciting races. For the rest of us, it can, with careful planning, still be visited. There are, however, only a few ways to get to Cape Horn, apart from having your own yacht, of course. An increasingly popular option is via helicopter from the Chilean town of Puerto Toro. A day-long adventure, it can be expensive, so you may want to seek travel companions on the adventure. Alternatively, charter sailboats can get you here, but it's a long haul and often rough. Cruise ships are perhaps the best option. A number of cruises, in fact, pass by Cape Horn on their way to Antarctica and will, weather and seas permitting, stop here for an hour. Passengers disembark via inflatable boats, so this part of the journey can be rough too. Once ashore, passengers can make the short cliff-top climb to what is perhaps the ultimate tourist selfie spot, the Cape Horn Memorial Sculpture. This breathtaking monument and its incredible views welcome you to the bottom of the world. And now at five, the Chilean Lake District. Stretching for more than 330 kilometers from Temuco to Puerto Montt and resembling the alpine regions of Europe, the Chilean Lake District is well worth exploring. Like its alpine cousin, this beautiful region of the Andean foothills boasts rich farmland at the base of its many snow-capped volcanoes, ringed by thick forests and the kind of deep lakes that water sports enthusiasts drool over. And the connection to Europe doesn't end here. After the forced resettlement of the region's indigenous people, the Mapuche, farmers from Switzerland, Austria and Germany arrived, bringing with them aspects of their own culture that can still be seen in the architecture of towns like Osorno and Valdivia, as well as in the region's customs and festivals. For adventure seekers, a typical Chilean Lake District itinerary includes endless hiking and biking potential, along with other fun activities such as volcano climbing, whitewater rafting, kayaking, canoeing, horseback riding and, come winter, skiing. Road trips to the region are also extremely popular. And now, at 4, Santiago, Chile's cultural capital. Santiago is not only the financial and business capital of Chile, it also serves as a country's cultural and entertainment center. Consequently, it's home to endless fun things to do, including visiting its best museums and galleries, along with excellent shopping, dining and hotel options. Centrally located in the country's main transportation hub, Santiago is where most visitors begin their Chilean travels before heading to the Andes or other areas of outstanding natural beauty, such as Easter Island. The smartest travellers, though, will allow time in their Chile travel itinerary to get to know Santiago. Founded in 1541 and relatively crowd-free, the city features points of interest such as the Centro Cultural Palacio La Moneda, a state-of-the-art cultural centre occupying part of the impressive Palacio de la Moneda and the Chilean National Museum of Fine Arts. Established in the 1880s, it focuses on Chilean artists and boasts a large permanent collection of paintings, sculptures and photos. Other must-sees are the excellent Museum of Pre-Columbian Art, featuring collections relating to the country's native people and the Museum of Memory and Human Rights. The latter commemorates those who suffered under the Pinochet regime. A highlight of any visit to Santiago is taking the aerial tramway to San Cristobal Hill for its stunning views over this most hospitable of cities. There are also some interesting attractions here, including an observatory, a 22-metre tall statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary and an amphitheatre. Be sure to also spend time enjoying Santiago Metropolitan Park, a huge urban green space. Here you'll find a botanical garden, the Chilean National Zoo and a funicular railway.
At 3. Easter Island and Rapa Nui National Park First visited by Europeans in 1722, the magnificent yet remote Easter Island, so named by a Dutch explorer who first set eyes on it on Easter Sunday, has been inhabited for thousands of years by Polynesians. Despite being more than 3,500 kilometres away from mainland Chile, this fascinating island with its remarkable stone sculptures remains the country's most recognisable attraction. All told, 887 of these statues, known as Maui, created by the island's early Rapa Nui population, have been identified, most of them now protected by Rapa Nui National Park. The most impressive collection is at Ahu Tongariki, where 15 of them have been re-erected on the island's largest Maui platform, or Ahu. Rapa Nui is also where you'll find one of the country's best beaches, Anakena. This beautiful yet short stretch of white coral sand is the perfect spot for a break from hiking. Also of interest are the many Hare Pauenga ruins near Ahu sites consisting of stones that once formed the foundation of boat-shaped houses. Other highlights include the Father Sebastian Englert Anthropological Museum in Hangaroa, the island's main community, notable for its exhibits relating to the history of the Polynesian islanders and their traditions. Oh, hot tip! Visiting Easter Island is best done as part of a Chilean vacation with regular flights available from Santiago or Tahiti. Flight times are approximately five hours, so expect to stay at least a couple of days. All right, at number two, Valle de la Luna and the Atacama Desert. Valle de la Luna, which literally translates as Valley of the Moon, lies 13 kilometers west of San Pedro de Atacama, at the north end of the country, near its border with Bolivia. It can be accessed via well-marked bike trails, tour buses or self-drive car rentals. This rugged, inhospitable-looking landscape in the heart of the Atacama Desert attracts many visitors for its eerie resemblance to the surface of the moon, an effect caused by the erosion of its sand and stone features by wind and water over countless millennia. Despite its remoteness, though, this surprisingly beautiful landscape has sustained life for centuries, both human as well as that of numerous species of flora and fauna. Among its most interesting features are its dry lake beds. This is, after all, one of the driest places on the planet, which are dazzlingly white due to deposited salt and prone to producing fascinating natural saline outcrops. Other notable features of the Atacama Desert are the region's many caverns, some containing evidence of pictographs created by early man and where some of the world's oldest mummies preserved by the area's aridity were found. The most famous of these, the Chinchorro mummies, are now on display at the Archaeological Museum in San Miguel de Azapa. Also of interest is the Laguna Seja sinkhole, famous for its turquoise water. And finally, at number one, Torres del Paine National Park. One of Chile's most important natural areas and an increasingly popular travel destination is the spectacular Torres del Paine National Park. Situated more than 100 kilometers north of the city of Puerto Natales in southern Patagonia, this stunningly beautiful area encompasses mountains, glaciers and countless lakes and rivers. The most important region of the park is the Cordillera del Paine, an area that marks the transition from the Patagonia steppe to the subpolar forests of the north. Perhaps the most notable of its many wonderful features are the three 2,850 meter tall granite peaks of the Paine Massif, which dominate this already breathtaking scenery. Hiking is one of the park's most popular activities, with numerous well-marked trails, many offering overnight shelters, refugios, and the basics needed for longer treks that circle the mountains. If you're planning on anything more than a day's hiking, professional guides are recommended and, in some areas, mandatory. One of the top guided tours of the park is the five-day W Trek, one of the top hikes in Patagonia. This 71-kilometer route takes in some of the top points of interest in Patagonia, including the massive Glacier Grey and the mountains of Paine Grande. And there you have the top 10 rated tourist attractions in Chile. Did you like what you saw? Let us know in the comments down below. Share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fantastic travel guides. See you next time.